too many transformations are driven by technology rather than by the needs of the business. Experience is the teacher, so you want someone who's failed before. And the, a, a good systemic change is basically do one small change at a time that's based on the value. Hello everybody, welcome to Innovation Roots Studio and I'm back with another interesting interview and today I have a very, uh, very interesting guest, uh, Dave Thomas with us. Hi Dave, how are you? Hey, great to be here. Look forward to talking to you. Thank you for joining me for this discussion and I would let the audiences know a little bit about yourself, Dave. So uh, Dave Thomas is the founder of Vidara Corporation. He has a wide spectrum of experience in the software industry as an executive, investor, board member, consultant, architect, and engineer. Uh, he's the founder and the past CEO of Object Technology International as well, which is known as OTI. He has been the founding director of Agile Alliance as well in the past. So really great to have you with us, uh, Dave, for this discussion. Great to be here. So yes, I'm a software fossil. Sorry for the long intro. <laughs> No, it's, it's, these are all important things that you have uh, done for the community though. So it's, it's important to mention those. Well, uh, we, we are Dave living in the world of digital transformation and which is happening at um, a very high speed as well. So I would begin this discussion with your view on the current landscape of digital transformation uh, in order to accelerate the modernization of global businesses. Sure. Well, um... I guess if your guests aren't aware of it, I'm uh, probably not a uh, Agile Mooney or Cloud follower. So although I was a founder of the Agile Alliance, I'm perhaps a little more critical of it than some. But I think the real problem is there's way too many transformations are driven by technology rather than by the needs of the business. So they're often, often they're, they're driven by uh, vendors or consultants, or uh, I guess uh, a lust for technology to change inside the organization as opposed to really well-defined business goals and objectives. And the, uh, or sometimes there, you know, there are people who are really keen to see a new methodology. They want to change from waterfall to agile or to microservices, whatever it is. But most of the technical changes aren't, you know, often are not justified by clear business goals. So anything that doesn't have clear business goals and business value is not going to be successful. Uh, you know, transformations, in my experience, need to be targeted to the places and points where they have the maximum impact. And I think that's the real problem is they lack clear measurements and goals. They go on for years. Uh, and uh, I think in many cases, most companies lose their way uh, because you, it's very hard to keep uh, a wide systemic uh, transformation of any kind, uh, you know, going over a period of, you know, sometimes it's five years, some companies are still going. And, uh, it's really, by the time they're done, the, check, the, the choices they've made have, you know, been, you know, no longer being made, you know, the, the technology, the practices, the business has changed. So I think the, the key thing is basically look at transformations like you do sort of um, software development, think incrementally, think what's the value, the business value, where can we deliver the business value incrementally and don't try and move your entire organization, try and change the parts that need to be changed. Yeah, I think that's an important point to, to I think, to be uh, kept in mind for the organizational leaders specifically. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Dave, you would have seen a lot of organization and worked with a lot of CEOs and you would have seen making them some mistakes. So what are some of the common mistakes, according to you, CEOs are making nowadays, uh, especially in terms of technological evolution? 
Well, I think, um, look, it's a difficult job being a CEO. You have lots of pressures uh, from your shareholders, from your customers, uh, from your internal things, your limited resources. I think the biggest problem is that CTOs are relatively uninformed with regard to the to the actual technology choices that and they rely on they rely on one or two experts, internal, ex external, and you know when they really don't. I mean, some CEOs do, but they, they, their job is to manage the whole business, not worry about the technology per se. And so they often get caught in the tech in the technology fashion show, or basically, you know, this year it's you know cloud or microservices and you know agile. So they tend to get uh, caught in these things and and they have lots of enthusiastic people who want to do you know we really want to do microservices and we really want to do cloud but don't have much experience really doing it so they haven't seen the the end of the movie right and they don't realize you know there are issues with agile or microservices or whatever technology you pick um, so I think they often don't have and they often rely on a single leadership, internal, external, whatever, as opposed to sort of getting multiple viewpoints on what's appropriate and really becoming informed about, not about the details of the technology, but what are the issues or the problems they can expect? What are the costs that they can expect? Because there's every time there's a new technology, someone promises you that basically it'll save you money, you know, your life will be better, you know, you know, your children will be happy, you know, all sorts of things. Um, so I think the, the real problem is they they need to have be better informed and basically have more people who have diverse opinions. So you know, don't rely on a single insult, consultant or a single expert or whatever. Try and bring together a group of people who disagree, so you can actually try and understand what it is that you're stepping into. Otherwise, and, and you know, vendors are very good at doing this. You know, the large companies are very good at uh, you know, selling people services and, you know, telling them they need to be agile or whatever it is. But uh, we always try and populate multi multi vendor teams where we bring in leaders in the different areas of expertise who are actually independent as opposed to bringing in one company or just relying on our own resources. We try and have a diverse group of expertise in the technologies to try and share their experiences. And, you know, you, you want to hire someone who's done it wrong two or three times, right? Absolutely. Experience is the big, biggest teacher. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Dave, there are times that systemic business-wide transitions, they tend to prove very expensive. What do you suggest as a solution in such situations? Well, um, my, my advice is don't do them. You know, systematic transformations are a really bad idea. Um, they're one of those things that basically says, if you do this, things will be better in three years time, maybe because the executive is going to switch to another company. He doesn't mind that because when it doesn't work, uh, he won't or she won't be there. Uh, but I, you know, the real, the, the, the real problem is that just, they're just trying to move too much, right? They're trying to change too many people, too much in the organization and that means that they typically don't have a lot of have much money. So instead of focusing on points that are really important, they spread it across the whole organization and it takes forever. So you never can tell whether it's really successful or not. So the key thing is to understand the real value streams and where the specific technology or practices can make them a near term value or something. If you can't see improvements on a regular basis, ideally quarterly or every six months, if you can't measure those things with the business value and do it, then you really shouldn't be doing it. The whole notion of just converting your company, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great story for consultants to sell. You know, you can, you know, you know, get printed in Harvard or whatever, you know, you know, but it's a very difficult journey and most of them don't work because it's very hard to sustain just the resources to try and keep the energy up. You may need Agile in one part, one project, right? But you're going to train everyone in Agile or everyone in microservices, or everyone in cloud. You don't have the money or the time. So, you know, 
system, the, a, a good systemic change is basically do one small change at a time that's based on the value and make it value driven and measurable, right? Make it agile as opposed to, you know, a waterfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and uh, since we're talking about agile again, uh, do you have some new technologies and practices that you would like to recommend in 2024 to the agile practitioners? Well, I think I'd actually wish that the people would actually do things like uh, test driven development and so on. I mean. Most people don't do all the agile practices and that's why the, the things don't work. So the first thing I would do is make sure you're actually competent with all the practices, particularly the technical practices. You know, too many people basically use the project practices, Scrum and you know, Kanban and things like that, but they don't do test driven development. They don't do refactoring. And without that, you know, it's, it's you really have to do the package of services. So the first thing is do all. I think there are some useful tools. For instance, for larger transformations, the Wardley maps are really an excellent tool. Uh, this is a great way for people to see. They work. They allow both the technical side and the executives to see what's going on. Uh, provide a nice big picture for where the company is going to go, how it fits in the in, with the given technologies and so on. So I, I strongly recommend Wardley maps. I think the other thing, of course, is that uh, you can't you can't avoid AI, so uh, you need to embrace it. And uh, AI, I think, that the biggest impact for transformations, in particular, is is applying it to improving the requirements and improving the testing. Uh, and code assistants uh, are useful, right? I mean, basically, you have all these terrible frameworks like React, which have hundreds of undocumented APIs. Well, the good news is ChatGPT can help you with those. So essentially it forms a smart autocomplete. So for a, a developer not to use AI tools, I think is a mistake for people not to look at doing their requirements. Um, also, you know, there's a lot of AI now for using, uh, uh, what do we call those? Uh, there's a name for it. I'll think of it in a second. Uh, low code approaches. Right, so you can actually describe your problem instead of using all the complicated stack that you know the you know full stack developer. Uh, there's a lot of uh, AI based low code approaches which are much simpler and you know, require much less of the sophistication on the part of the developer. So instead of fighting to try and compete, you know if you're you know a textile company and you're, you're trying to compete with a, a telco or somebody you know who's you know uh, got got all these expensive, fancy developers. You, you can switch technologies and be able to go quite quickly, uh, provided that you're, you're willing to define your application. So I think AI is gonna help a lot in terms of doing that, but it takes considerable practice and expertise to do that. All right, and these are some interesting suggestions for you, Dave. And I would also like you to give some tips for the CEOs of today to ensure a sustainable business. I think a lot of uh, startups and some companies also face the issue of sustainability nowadays. So what would be those tips? Well, I think you know, it, it, definitely, it definitely is a big challenge. And you know, thanks for asking. I think that, you know, and it really is not just, you really need to understand the IT business value chain. A lot of people don't, you know, they just treat IT as a box, you know, but you really need to understand your business processes and those which are touched by IT. And so that's basically called value stream analysis. And that's very, very important. In fact, I would say that lean, is, lean thinking is much more important than agile. Agile is great for the development team, but lean thinking is what the organization needs if it's doing a transformation. So. I really think most transformations are really about lean transformations with some agile assistance for the development teams and so on. Um, the other thing is to focus on short term innovations or interventions that can give targeted value. You know, you know, by taking an existing process and automating it, very seldom does much. 
What you have to do is change the way you do things, and that's called innovation. And that doesn't come, you know, innovation comes from having everybody contribute their ideas and so on. So you have to look at so the, the you know, particularly the Toyota, uh, you know, who really perfected lean and their approaches for how they have these A cards where basically uh, innovations by everyone are welcomed and they take these innovations. So it's innovations that make a difference. It's not, you know, rewriting the code from a green language into a red language. It, it's really these innovations. So you need to look for the, pl the places in the value chain where you can make a difference, find some way that's clever that makes it go faster or Im reduce, improves the quality and focus there. So it's small to medium size uh, innovations or interventions that will make a difference rather than taking rewriting large parts of the system or changing the technology. Replatform. Anytime somebody says rewrite, replatform, uh, ask them to leave. Those are bad words for a CEO here. We have to rewrite it. We have to replatform it. We have to switch everything to this. Everybody has to be retrained. That's just, Those are really bad signals. You don't want to hear those words from the team that you're working on. And that really means you want to avoid these other you know, large scale systemic transformations such as we talked about because they're long time spans, they're very expensive. Um, most rewrites don't finish or they basically rewrite it in new language and it doesn't do anything but different, right? Congratulations, you spent three years, it's all done with microservices, but you haven't increased the value. It's still missing functionality. All you've done is convert it from one language to another and no business value. So um, really focus again on the value, very simple lean principles. That's wonderful. Thank you, Dave, for, for sharing some valuable insights on the opportunities and challenges basically that we are anticipating for 2024. And with that, we come to the end of our first round of discussion. And in the second round, I will have In the second round, I will have some rapid fire questions for you to know you a little more. So let me know when you're ready. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so do you have any nicknames? Uh, not really. You know, <laughs> some people know. So some people distinguish Daves by you know different Daves. So you know, uh, I often get confused with Prague Dave. So lots of people call me yeah. Big Dave. So. Uh, any book that you have recently read? Yeah, well, I think one that's particularly relevant to this, which is, um, I read it recently, but I recommend it often. I can see I was a couple of years ago is, uh, particularly for, you know, a lot of people in the software industry don't have a broad background, uh, you know, because they've come in and they've learned you know, the, the technology is so complicated, they have to learn all these things in the stack, so they don't have a chance to learn the software engineering principles. Uh, uh, so there's a wonderful book by Dave Farley called Modern Software, uh, Modern Software Engineering. And I really recommend that. And in many ways, it's actually nothing modern in it, uh, but they're really good ideas, but he presents them in a modern light. So I would say that that should be a book on every Every team's bookshelf should have that. It's a great place to go. It references got lots of links to other things. So uh, that would probably be my favorite pick uh, this year. Anyway. Okay, that's amazing. And uh, do you remember any advice or a best advice that you have ever received? Work with people better than you, so you can learn from them. So, and if and if if you're if you're the best in, if you're the best in your team, go find someplace else to work because pretty soon you'll you'll just be, you won't be going faster, All right? So many people, you know, if, if, when's the time to leave? When you're the best, right? Because you want to try and move to another, in the, maybe in the same company, or maybe you want to switch and learn more about management. So it doesn't have to be, you know, necessarily changing you know, to a different. Uh, Technical job, it could be changing your skill set, but it's important to always try and find people who are better from you, better than you, so you can learn from them. Mm, that's interesting. So, 
hey, we know you as the founder of Agile Alliance, OTI, Bedara, but is there anything that not many people know about you? No idea. <laughs> Never right. thought about it. Uh -huh. All right. And one last question in this round would be, what is the most inspiring quote that you have ever read? The most inspiring quote that, well, I guess there's two, two people that really had a big influence on me. Um, one was Seymour Cray, who you know, did the Cray supercomputers. And he, he had a wonderful idea that he, he had a phrase, uh, a quote that hire them young, they don't know it can't be done. So he used to hire young engineers and give them very difficult problems. Mm -hmm. And you know, they succeeded where many more, many experienced engineers did not. So I've always in the various companies have hired people very young and had them do that. And you know, this is often considered risky because everyone wants to hire more experienced people. But my experience is that hiring young people, uh, they are excited. They will do almost anything because they're not biased, right? Versus if you get someone who has a master's degree, they think they know everything, right? <laughs> and and uh, plus they're out of date, right? Because by the time they've been, you know, got a master's or PhD, they've been in school for seven years or something like that. So I like to hire um, uh, young people. And uh, so, you know, that, that, quote by Seymour Cray was very inspirational to me. Thanks for sharing that with us, Dave. And uh, with that, we have come to the end of this discussion. We have covered a lot of things right from the current landscape of digital transformation, some mistakes that CEOs make, some tips for them, uh, some technology and practices recommendation for agile practitioners. I would like to conclude this discussion with an expert tip from you, Dave. Uh, about some of the most important ingredient that is required for a successful uh, digital transformation, according to you. Well, I guess the first one is um, they should be uh, like lean and agile, incremental, not large scale systemic. Right. So they really should be you know, incremental. They should be driven by uh, focus on business value and look at innovating in the existing business, not just trying to rewrite it. And they should be looking at how to deliver value quickly. You should be able to deliver value every quarter to your business. If you can't, then you're irrelevant because businesses run on a quarterly financial plan. And uh, so you need to find ways to, to synchronize with that plan and deliver. If you can deliver value every quarter, you will become very successful in your business. People will notice quickly who you are after three months or six months or nine months. Uh, people will be deferring to you uh, because you focus on it. It'll also be clear to the executives that the value is being delivered. And so they can plan. Otherwise, you run this long-term plan and you're just hoping things are gonna happen. Uh, it's very difficult. If the answer, someone comes to you and says, the only thing you know, the only thing we can do is re-platform or rewrite this thing, stop, don't do it. The biggest mistake, I mean, you know, if someone says we're just gonna refactoring, most of the time that's a lie. Refactoring is misused as a word for we're gonna rewrite everything, but we'll, since refactoring is a positive word in Agile, we'll call it refactoring. But 90% of the time, these major refactorings are not refactorings at all, they're just big rewrites. So avoid giving people a mandate to re do large refactorings, uh, to do major replatforming, you know, Pick the parts of your business, the value chain, and maybe you know there's certain parts which will need to go to the cloud, that will need to be done with microservices, that will need a, a good agile team. But it's not the whole business. You know, really focus on, and if that those value points aren't obvious to you, uh, then how are you going to measure the progress? How will you know 
whether you're making any progress. So focus on the things which are important to the business and do things incrementally where you can measure the value. And you can see that they're done. All right, that's very interesting. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much once again for joining me for this discussion. I'm sure the audiences have a lot of takeaways from this discussion once they go back to work. Thanks very much. It's been great to talk to you again. All the best to you and your audience. Thank you.